my brothers and sisters in Christ, we now reach to you a communique issued by the Ghana Catholic Bishops' Conference at the end of its annual plenary assembly held in Donkokrum in the eastern region of Ghana from the 4th of November to the 12th of November 2022. Greetings. Grace and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Preamble. We, the members of the Ghana Catholic Bishops Conference, have held our annual plenary assembly at the Father Alphonse Merton Center. In the course of our plenary assembly, we had the opportunity to visit and interact with the chief of Atakura, Nana Ekuyamwa Buatin Tano II, and Nana Mireku Anim Nifahene of Tiase, and their elders. The DC of Kwau Afram Plains North, Honorable Isaac Ofori Korye, and some religious leaders. We also visited parishes, celebrated holy masses, and interacted with the people of God in the towns and villages of the Vicariate. Our plenary was also graced by the Apostolic Nuncio to Ghana, His Excellency, Most Reverend Hendrik Mieslav Jagosinski. The Eastern Regional Minister, Honorable Seth Kwame Achampon, the Member of Parliament for Kwau Afram Plains North, Honorable Betty Nana Ifua Crosby Manson, the DCU of Kwau Afram Plains North, Honorable Ofori, Honorable Ofori Isaac Corrier, the DC of Kwau Afram Plains South, Honorable Evans Che Intri, Heads of the Security Services, and Mr. Kwame Jan, a private legal practitioner who was the chairman for the opening ceremony. We also wish to express our gratitude to Most Reverend John Alphonse Asiedu, SVD, Apostolic Vicar, the priests, religious, and the entire faithful of the Donkokrom Vicariate for their warm hospitality and selfless contribution towards the success of our plenary assembly. Congratulations and appreciation. We wish to congratulate His Eminence, Richard Kadna Kuya Bawo, Missionary of Africa, on his elevation as a Kadna. We are proud of him for the honor he has brought to the conference and the country. We equally are grateful to God for how well he is recovering and pray for his total recovery. We wish to take this opportunity to thank His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufu Ado for the delegation sent to Rome for the consistory and for the support he has given during the time of the Cardinal's ill health. 
theme of this plenary. The theme for our 2022 plenary assembly was inspired by the synodal process initiated by Pope Francis in October 2021 to last till October 2024, through which he seeks to consult widely all members in the church, ordained and lay on how we can journey together and learn from one another in carrying out the mission of the church today in the light of the new evangelization. The theme is focused on helping all members of the Catholic Church in Ghana to work together, to listen more, and to deepen participation in discerning new paths and new ways of proclaiming the gospel of Christ in our pastoral context. Synodality aims at making evangelization a collective and shared responsibility of all Christ faithful. In the words of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, evangelization is co-responsibility. In the Synodal Church, every member participates actively in discerning a particular course of action for the proclamation of the gospel. Jesus, in the Great Commission, says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. In the light of the present situation of the Catholic Church in Ghana, all bishops, priests, religious, and laity should consciously and keenly respond to this great commission. From the level of the conference of bishops, through diocese to parish levels, we should listen, we should discern, and enthusiastically implement new and more effective ways of proclaiming the good news of salvation in Ghana and beyond. Interaction with the people of Kwahu Afram Plains. During our visits to the chiefs, political and religious leaders, the people expressed their grievances and asked that we bring some of these concerns to government and all stakeholders for urgent attention. Poor roads. We appeal to the government to construct the road from Eche, Amamfrom, through Donkokrom to Agodeke and the other connecting roads to the Afram Plains. Lack of a bridge from Adoso to Eche Amamfrom, the planned construction of a bridge over the Afram River should be implemented in the short term. Deforestation due to charcoal production, which the people of Afram Plains refer to as charcoal galamse. The meanings of charcoal galamse should be addressed by the government through the district assemblies to protect the forest from further depletion. Destruction of farms by the cattle of pastoralists. We have heard 
from our interactions that some chiefs, politicians, and security personnel who are supposed to be protecting the poor farmers are the owners of these cattle. We ask that these inhumane treatments of fellow human beings must cease and the relevant measures put in place to ensure peace and safety of life and property. High attrition rate of teachers, nurses, and other public servants posted to their front planes is a worrying situation. All efforts to retain those posted to the area, including the provision of the necessary infrastructure, a conducive working environment, and good incentives must be put in place. On safe water transport to protect lives and property, we ask for regulations that will ensure the enforcement of water safety activities on the Volta Lake and the provision of well-equipped rescue patrol teams. The need for a tertiary referral health facility for the people. We ask that the Agenda 111 project at Tiasi by the government be expedited. A call for a tertiary institution. We appeal to the government to fulfill the initial plan of establishing a satellite campus of the University of Environment and Sustainable Development in the Afram Plains. Other issues of national concern. Persistent challenges. In our communique last year in WA, we catalogued a number of challenges that confronts us as a nation. A year on, we are sad to note that the situation has worsened. The numerous challenges persist. These challenges include high cost of living, high inflation, youth unemployment, bribery, corruption, greed, selfishness, lack of patriotism, poverty, deplorable roads, carnage on our roads, armed robbery, murder, and other crimes. Galam say, weak and ineffective institutions of governance, abandoned and unfinished government projects, the culture of impunity, examination more practices, violence, intimidation, attack on the media, men and women, human trafficking, and abductions. These challenges, in addition to the current global crisis, have contributed to our current socioeconomic situation. Current economic hardships. The economic hardships are becoming unbearable for Ghanaians. Our interactions reveal that Ghanaians are getting angry, frustrated, and disappointed. This anger is growing 
and is expressed through booing at government officials, demonstrations, open insults, etc. An urgent action must be taken to douse the anger and frustration of the people. See, we seem never to have had our economic fundamentals right. It is clear that governments over the time have not put in place the right systems that can stand all economic shocks. This is the reason we have to resort to the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, and the World Bank repeatedly for economic bailouts. We see little or no sign of improvement. It is for this reason that we are calling on government to intensify the stakeholder engagement that should be all inclusive and non-partisan. We believe that through these broader consultations, we shall develop a more robust economic policy for our country and ensure its implementation. We strongly advise Ghanaian traders, businessmen and women, not to take undue advantage of the current situation for profiteering and making ordinary persons more impoverished. The bane of partisan politics in Ghana. Politics in Ghana has unfortunately split Ghanaians on partisan lines. This makes it difficult for us to speak with one voice and come together for the sake of the common good. Because of unhealthy partisan politics, one's commitment to the nation and the church is mostly sacrificed for the interest of one's party. We wish to call on the two major political parties, the New Patriotic Party, MPP, and the National Democratic Congress, NDC, to accept the fact that none of them alone has the solution for our economic challenges. That is why both have resorted to the International Monetary Fund or the IMF and the World Bank for support over the years. This is a clear indication that we have to come together as one people and collectively look for a permanent solution to our challenges. bribery and corruption. Our previous calls on this issue seem to yield no positive results. We reiterate that corruption in every facet of Ghanaian life is not only perceived, but very rife. This is unacceptable and must be dealt with at all times and at all levels of human endeavor. Since corruption is cancerous to the life and vitality of our nation, we call on every Ghanaian, religious leaders, individuals, government agencies, service providers, public and civil servants to stand up and to defend the cause of justice, probity, and accountability. 
Ghana must lead and leave the crusade against corruption. Let all of us eschew attitudes, behaviors, and actions that support, encourage, and condone bribery and corruption. We call on all Catholics, especially those in politics and public service, to lead this crusade against corruption. We ask that our president should show real commitment in fighting corruption by making use of the security and intelligence community to investigate allegations of corruption, prosecute, as well as recover stolen funds. Illegal mine, Galamse. Another concern is Galamse, or illegal mining activities and their devastating effects on the environment. Our water bodies, the forest reserves, and the quality of life of our people. The experts have said that the widespread destruction of our forest cover does not only lead to emissions of greenhouse gases, but also reduces the forest's ability to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, hence contributing to climate change. It is common knowledge that the main financiers, the campaigns of this illegal mining include chiefs, politicians, regional ministers, metropolitan, municipal, and district chief executives, security personnel, among others. This is the main reason for our inability to approach the menace of Galamse and have difficulty in prosecuting those arrested for their involvement in illegal mining. We urge the relevant agencies responsible for the protection and preservation of our natural resources to ensure the prosecution of the financiers of activities that result in major crises facing the country, such as illegal mining or galamse. One critical example is the call for prosecution of the owners of Akunta Mining Limited, among others who have been accused by the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, confirmed by the Minerals Commission, and reported in the media. Our attention has been drawn to plans to start mining next year in parts of the Volta and Oti regions. Now, considering the devastation of the environment at the mining areas, particularly places where illegal mining has been rampant and careless, we strongly propose that a moratorium be placed on granting new concessions and issuing of licenses for mining. In the case where any actions have already been taken, we propose that operationalizing of the agreement be placed on hold until a clear pathway is developed to ensure modern and environmentally friendly mining. Meanwhile, the government 
in partnership with the private sector should engage all stakeholders to develop and operationalize alternate, alternative sources of livelihood for those involved in illegal mining. In addition, the security and intelligence agencies of the state should ensure the security and safety of all anti galamse activities. anti galamse activists. The protracted Boku conflict. It appears the conflict and insecurity in Boku are gradually getting off the radar of government. The town has become a pale shadow of itself as education, health, and social services delivery is adversely affected by the exodus of teachers, nurses, and business people from the town. Government needs to pay attention to the plight of the remnant residents of the town by ensuring that lasting solution is found for the conflict in the area and should act swiftly to prevent Boku and its environs from becoming a possible launching pad for terrorist groups operating in the neighboring countries. Furthermore, we appeal to the factions involving the conflict to help the process of peace building for the sake of the future of Boku and the peace of Ghana. Recommendations. Government should set the example in the burden sharing by really cutting down on economic cost. The size of government and leadership in state-owned enterprises should be significantly reduced. One strong signal that will indicate leadership is committed to burden sharing is by reducing the size of presidential and ministerial convoys. There should be an aggressive approach to acting on recommendations of the Auditor General's report, which are replete with cases of misappropriation of the mismanagement and actual thievery. As part of the efforts to stabilize the city, there should be a stiffer crackdown on the black market and money laundering. Government must protect local industries and promote made in Ghana goods. Ghanaians must equally patronize made in Ghana goods. Import duties on materials and goods for critical industries should be reduced. There should be an aggressive push for renewable energy. For example, the use of solar energy. Now, a message of hope. You wish to call on all Ghanaians to be hopeful. We appeal to all of you to pray and continue to make the necessary sacrifices as we look forward to quick interventions that will bring us out of the current difficulty. We can make it together 
And as our theme for the plenary suggests, through participation and communion, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Conclusion. We urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and all people of goodwill for the building of the body of the church until we attain unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 and verses 11 to 13. May St. Francis Xavier, the patron of Don Cochrom Apostolic Vicariate, continue to intercede for us. Amen. Amen. So the bishops issued this on Friday, 11th of November, 2022, the feast of St. Martin of Tours in the St. Francis Xavier Cathedral in the Don Cochrane Apostolic Vicariate. God bless you.